Welcome back to another episode of the Startup Therapy Podcast. This is Ryan Rutan, joined as always by Will Schroeder, my friend, partner, and the founder and CEO of Startups.com. Will, I think it's pretty common in, in most founders' journeys that there's some day that you wake up and you realize this thing's working pretty well. Things are going great for everybody except me, the founder. <laughs> like... <laughs> how do we get there but like first let's talk about like wh when is that moment when when is that the, you know what's that precipitous event where we wake up and go fuck like what happened like why am i here i think there's two parts right i think half of it is when is that moment and, and i gotta yeah. say like it changes for everybody but it will happen right yeah <laughs> you almost right. certainly have that moment. it's coming but a big part of it is how did we get here, right? Like, yeah. you know, going into this, we had so much optimism about what our startup would be and how it yeah. would help us and change all our goals in life oh, in yes. so many different ways. And yet somehow we looked around and we're like, uh, this sucks. Like, why am I the only person sitting at my desk right now? <laughs> yeah. Why am I broke when everybody else is on vacation? Like, what's happening right now? And how yeah. am I the one that made all that happen? Like, <laughs> this, this was supposed Dude, to be my right. dream. Everyone else is living my dream but me. Like, how do we get here? And it reminds me of, like, when you wake up in the morning one day and you get on the scale and you're like, whoa, <laughs> that's a big number. <laughs> yeah. Hang on a and second. It wasn't, yeah. That wasn't, it wasn't the plan. It wasn't one cheeseburger, right? right? It wasn't one pizza. It was a little bit over a long enough period yeah. of time until one day you woke up and you, you looked at the scale, right? And you said, I, I got to do something here, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think, Ryan, what we should talk about, because I think it's every founder is dealing with it in some capacity, is kind of how did we get here? And by way of that, what can we do to kind of put some steps in motion to get some of this back, sure. right? To make it to be the startup that, that works for us and not the other way around. All right. So before we get into this next topic, I just want to let you know, what we talk about here is like, 1% of the conversation. You know, really this conversation is going on all day long online at groups.startups.com where Ryan and I pretty much talk endlessly with founders about every one of these topics. So if by the end of this discussion, you like the topic and you want to dig into it a little bit more with Ryan and I, just head to groups.startups.com and we'll pick it up from there. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, and we've, we've talked about, you know, other... Other related topics where it comes down to this notion of kind of a death by a thousand cuts, like you said, it sure, wasn't sure. it wasn't the it wasn't that the one cheeseburger, it wasn't the single slice of pizza. It's a lot of little decisions uh, that that go counter to that dream that we're trying to build or that we believe are necessary sacrifices along the way. And I think it's that is one of those really critical and super hard to to, to kind of dissect without some really specific examples of those situations right where it's like we feel like we have to make that sacrifice in order to get to that future state that we want you and i have seen this play out enough times that we know that often those sacrifices don't lead to that they lead to the scenario that Absolutely. we've described instead which is you wake up going well, what happened <laughs> like this this is not this was not the train that i got on um but in the moment they can be really really hard to see Right? It, it can be hard to right. predict the future, and you feel like, I have to make the sacrifice now in order to get that thing later. And I think that's one of the things that we can, we can kind of key in on. Are, what are some of those little decisions that end up stacking up into these larger problems over time? Like, what comes to mind for you? Like, and, and let's go as early as we can in the startup where we start to make some of these decisions where we go off of that like North Star dream path um, sure. and just end up at a strip mall instead. <laughs> well, uh, let's talk about what what c concepts or proclamations we had. Yeah, leading into this, sure, I mean, they're typically the same. Yep, I want to work for myself. Yes, I don't want I'll people telling me what to do. Yep, I want to be on my own path. Yep. Right, that's that's almost part and parcel with this whole thing. I want to create some financial freedom. I want to be able to make my own money so I can write my own paycheck and be able to kind of set my own my own future that way. Yep. Okay, and and. As founders are listening to this and they're saying, you know, I, I do remember that goal. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> right. so far sounds, away. But I, I remember Isabel. that goal. 
I want to be able to set my own schedule. If I yeah. want to get up and go do something that I really enjoy doing, I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to have PTO or vacation time because I'll take vacation whenever the hell I please, <laughs> right? And it's so fun. It's laughable because it, it sounds oh like it's supposed to right. work. Right. It sounds like it's supposed to go that way. Yep. And yet, <laughs> as we're at our desk at 11 p.m., looking at a bank balance that has a negative uh, you know, uh, sign in front of it, yep. and looking at like how horrifically out of shape we are, how incredibly like you know distressed we are yeah. in so many ways, and going, I made this. I, that's yeah, the, that's worst, the part. worst part, man. Yeah, you, we did this to ourselves. Like I, I picked this path, I designed this, and then I made all the little decisions that got me here. Yeah, I, mean, I, I remember thinking, actually having the thought at one point that like I was my own boss. And I was probably the worst boss ever, right? like for myself. <laughs> and just thinking, like, man, I I chose this, um, but now like the decisions that I'm making, um, and this was like this was early on. Like, so I had a co-founder, but like it was really early on. Uh, no real employees, some contractors building some stuff, but like wasn't really managing people. It was really just managing the business and managing myself. And I was a horrible boss to myself. Right? My expectations for myself were absolutely ludicrous, um, and it was all self-imposed. Right, that's the truly laughable right. part, um, and and how quickly we can get there too. It wasn't like all of a sudden I was like, "We're about to cross into the Fortune 500." You know, we've got to really like knuckle down. We're like, "We're about to cross into the we made five hundred dollars um, uh, zone," which is where we were at. And yet I was just like, I was pushing myself so hard and all of those things, right? All of those reasons, all of those beautiful proclamations that I had made um, were just like, I, I don't know, tossed out the window. If I, even, I don't think I even had a window in that office. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's self-imposed um, and it happens fast, really fast. Well, it does. And so it happens in ways where we don't see yeah. it. We're, we're essentially mortgaging our goals without realizing yep. it. For example, we take on our first employee. Here's how we think it's supposed to work. I've, I've now hired an employee. They are staff. Yep. I'm boss man. Yep. They do what I say. Yes. Here's the reality of it. <laughs> I'm awake at three in the morning, right. staring at the ceiling, saying, how the fuck am I going to pay yeah, this person? Exactly. <laughs> we just lost another client. We're not going to be able to make payroll. That doesn't feel like being boss, no, man. Not. That doesn't feel like everyone jumping at my every whim. That feels like me at three in the morning wondering how I got here and how now everybody else's concerns are my yep. liability. Yep. Right? All of a sudden, their and, problems and, are And all of a problems. sudden, yep. right, if, if they're not getting their job done, now I'm spending all my time in frustration babysitting them to make sure they get their job yes. done. That's not what I had right. in mind. They were supposed to come to work uh, bring me coffee. I don't even drink <laughs> coffee, but I, but I had this, this idea that right. I wanted it. And, and they, they come to me and they say, Mr. Schroeder, what do you need? In this scenario, they also call me right. Mr. Schroeder for, for some reason too. I'm like Monopoly man. And, 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 and I have this idea that all of these things are working for me. But the reality is every time I set those goals, how they play out goes the exact opposite. Yeah. And so what we end up doing is we end up once again mortgaging those goals, right? We end up saying, oh, okay, I get it. You know, uh, you have to take some time off to go do whatever you're going to do. I'll yep. fill in for you, mortgage yep. goal, right? Uh, or, hey, I understand that, like, um, we're going to, you know, have this long dev cycle. I guess I'm going to have to work weekends. But in my mind, I wasn't like, let's create something where I get to work weekends all the time. That yeah. would be sweet, <laughs> right? Was not, Everything was not written runs into counter. the business plan. No, no. Or, or I'm going to be on the road for 200 days a year and not see my family. That wasn't part of my, my goal setting for a startup, right. but I have to, right? Yeah. Because if I don't, or if at least, you know, me and my team don't, we're not going to be around long enough to, you know, c to run this thing any longer. And, and Ryan, I think what kills us is that there's never a moment, typically, where we stop and say, Ah, oh shit. Okay, now we're kind of shortchanging our goals, right? Like, yeah. like this is a moment where you know we said that we didn't want to report to anybody, but if we take on a big client, we're essentially reporting to them because they've got our entire book of business. Yes. 
or if we take right. on an investment, we're essentially going to be reporting to a board, but we have to because we have to raise money yeah. and we have to grow this thing. And so yet another goal gets compromised. You know, by the way, I just want to mention if what we're talking about today sounds like the kind of discussion you wish you were having more often, you actually can. You know, we're online all day, every day, working through exactly these types of topics with founders just like you. So any question you would have or maybe some problem you just want to work through, we're here and we love this stuff. And we're easy to find. You know, head over to groups dot startups dot com and let's just start talking it does and i like the concept of mortgaging i really i really yeah. like that, that that's the word that you chose here because it's a great analog for this um it, but it's 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 a dangerous it's a dangerous mortgage that we're taking on because it's typically a lot of it, it's it's a bunch of it's a bunch of uh uh subprime credit cards <laughs> is what it ends up being right and you don't realize the rate on these things. Yeah. This is this is where it really becomes dangerous. The these sacrifices that you make make sense at the time, given that it gives you what you think you need in that moment. What you cannot understand and see in that moment typically is what the actual cost of those sacrifices is compounded over time. Great point. In the same way that if you went to say, like, oh, I need a new laptop. Cool. How much is the laptop? Two thousand dollars. I don't have $2,000. No worries. We've got financing. Cool. What's the rate? 85%. I guess I don't need a new laptop, right? But in our startups, we do often mortgage things at incredible rates, right? But we don't know we it. We just can't see at the time. We don't yep. know it. We're mortgaging yep. our health relationships. We've talked about the different currencies that we spend to build these and the interest rates that are truly applied to these things. And I think this is a big part of the problem, right? That 200 days on the road feels necessary because right. it gives us what we thought we needed in that moment. But what we don't realize is what we've traded in future value in terms of our life, the quality of living, the, 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 the connection to team, family, the rest of it, at the time we're making those deals, right? right. Because again, there is no fine print. Right? There's nowhere to read that rate um, that takes a bit of a crystal ball and or just the hard experience of having gone through it and knowing I'm not going to do that again. Right, right. And also, at the time, we think that we're actually improving the goal, right? At the right. time when we take sure. on investment, we're like, no, 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 taking on investment is good. That's going to grow yeah. the business, which will give me more freedom. And on paper, that kind of makes sense. What we yeah. haven't experienced yet, because we probably haven't done it before, is that that new investor, that new board, has become our boss times 10. Like, yeah. Because all of the things that we would have had freedom to do five minutes ago yep. are forever taken away from us. Now, I'm not knocking exactly. investment. That's just what it is. Same thing yeah. with employees. In our mind, I have all these people working for me. But it's not until we write payroll for the first time and that money gets deducted out of our account, we're like, yeah. oh, employees are a massive <laughs> liability. My largest yeah. liability. And yeah. it's going to keep coming back to me on a regular basis, right? Yep. All, all these people are going to do the work for me. No, they're not. They're going to work, maybe, hopefully. They're not going to do it for you. The only way that work's going to get done is if you are in the weeds making sure it gets done. There's no yeah. kickback moment where you're the foreman at, you know, at, at the docks and everybody else <laughs> is doing work and just throwing money at you. Like This doesn't work right. that way. Right. Wait, there's no startups union? Are you, are you sure? <laughs> I'm sure there will be. And so all the things that we set out to do and we thought our startups would be the conduit to get done yeah. wind up going the opposite direction. But the messed up thing is that we're actually the ones driving it that direction. Yeah, we shifted in, in into reverse. Yeah. We're shifting into reverse and we're like, wow, look how fast we're going. <laughs> 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 yep. And so... Um, what I feel like is that all of our goals, because they get lost, we stop looking at them, right? right. So one of the things, Ryan, you, you and I have done uh, with the rest of the team, going in, we said we don't want to answer to anyone. Correct. And so it's been 10 years. A million times have we come back to the, yes, we could do this, but we don't want to answer to anyone, right? right? right. Now, that said, this is the first time in my career where I've ever held to that. Yeah. Every single time before, Ryan, 
when, when a big client came up, right, that would essentially rule my life, or an investor or a partner or anything else like that, I jumped on it in the name of progress. Right. And, and at that very moment, fired a bullet in whatever chances I ever had of maintaining some of those goals. Yeah. No, it, it, it's absolutely true. I, I think that, you know, I, I said it at the top of the episode, but the, the North Stars become so important here because right. those, those clear crystal objectives, and we're not talking about necessarily revenue goals, right? These could just be personal time goals. It could be whatever. But if you don't have some fundamental points that are unchangeable, right? That they're inflexible. Now, of course, there's pivots, there's things like that. But like, to some degree, some of these things need to be unchangeable. They need to be fixed so that you can aim at them and you can use them to make decisions, right? This is where I often find people stuck and just mired in, in what otherwise wouldn't be super complicated decisions and or it would be very clear that the cost of making the decision would not be worth it in the long run because they don't have these North Stars. They don't have right. a point in the future they can look at and go, does this get me there? And does it get me there in the way that I want to get there? Right? right. And if you don't have that, these decisions become impossible to the point of just being arbitrary. You're flipping a coin at that right. point and saying, I'm going to right. do this. And, and of course... It, it's a path forward, right? Um, but like you said, there are some decisions that you make, and we've, we've covered this in another episode as well, taking on capital, that eliminates a bunch of potential paths. Because right. now you're essentially scale, take on more funding, sell, IPO. These are really the only allowable outcomes once you've got those, that, that boss times 10 that you described who is the investor, Right? So some of those decisions really change the path that you even have. And that may move your North Star. And that may completely change your ability to reach those goals that you set out to meet in the first place. I look at them as debts masked as payoffs. Yeah. Right? It's exactly what they are. Right. I mean, I, I, raising capital is exactly that. Yeah. But taking on staff is that. For some people, depending on the relationship, taking on co-founders yes. is that. Right? Like I was good with how I wanted to do things. Now I've got three co founders. Now I've got three other right. paths that this thing can take. Right? If I don't have all those people agreeing to the yep. same thing. At the time, they sounded like payoffs. Yeah. We're at Startup Weekend. Everybody said, let's go do this thing. So I've got three other people that'll work for free and work on the idea and, you know, whatever right. until it becomes something. And now I've got all these personalities that I'm dealing with. Yep. Again, a, a debt, you know, uh, masked as a payoff. And look, all of these things are part of building a startup. Correct. So it, this isn't to say all these things are inherently bad. Um, they come with the territory. Yeah. What we're really talking about is not seeing what the effect of them yes. are. Right? We're running, like I said, we're running at full sprint, but we're actually in reverse toward what our goals are. And more importantly, we're allowing everyone else to agree that our goals don't matter. Correct. Implicitly. Yep. And we do that by constantly, constantly putting ourselves last. Yeah. When I first started uh, first business, and I'm sure this is with you, with everyone, I just assumed putting myself last was the noble thing to do. So here's what you do. Every startup, you try to outwork everybody. You take no pay. You run up all of your debt. These are all old school in the lore, in the halls of, of startup justice, the right things to do. <laughs> right. The problem is we get really used to doing them after a while. We yeah. get used to coming home late. We get used to missing soccer games. We get used to running our bodies you know, into the ground. And after a while, we start to get to this point where it doesn't even occur to us what the hell we're doing to ourselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it's just an entrenched behavior. It's a, it's a habit at that point. Right. right. Um, and it, like, like most habits, uh, you know, they... they they can, they can be good or they can be bad. Um, but when you don't recognize that you're just doing something out of habit, I think it's always bad. Even if it's something right. good for you, like recognize why you're doing the thing you're doing and, and how well it aligns with the goals. Um, right. And in so many of these cases, we just, again, we get used to putting ourselves last. We get used to um, you know, being the last one to, to, to leave the office, the first one in, 
all of these yep. things that we that we think matter and sometimes do, but again, without considering the cost. Um, and looked at in a vacuum, they don't sound that bad. You're like, yeah, so what? You worked a little harder. You're the founder. You should do that. Right. Yeah. Right. For a while until it like ruins your health or your 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 emotional state um, or your physical state. And then no, you shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's bad. And now your startup's gonna suffer because of it. So right. and you're it's gonna about suffer. recognizing the costs of these things as we go and recognizing what of these have just become habitual behaviors. Because the reality is, yes, late nights might have been part of the startup at some point. But if you're 10 years in, is the expectation that you and I should still be leaving the office at 10 o'clock at night? Certainly hope not, right? Like that's not, now we, there are nights where we have to do that, right? There's times yeah. where we do that. There are still times where things come up. There are emergencies or there are exciting opportunities, right? There are nights where I can't sleep because I'm so excited about what we're doing. That's okay sure. on occasion, right. right? But if that becomes my daily rhythm and it's without thought of cost or what it's actually achieving, now we're in a really, really dangerous spot because now we're just doing it out of habit and that's super dangerous, Will. Well, st stick with that. There is a threshold where commitment becomes destructive. Sure. And we forget that it's destructive. We yeah. forget, you know, again, we hop on the scale and we're like, wow, I'm super out of shape. And we forget that, that there was a time where we actually cared about that. Yeah. We forget that not being there for our family when they need us isn't okay. Yep. The problem with this is we just chip away at these behaviors over time. And the whole time, this is this is the the, the fallacy. The whole time, our belief is that all of this commitment is working towards something that will achieve the goals where we don't have to do this anymore. Now, Correct. some of that's true. Yeah. You know, and that, that is part be. of building a startup. It can the be. problem is the the difference between commitment and destroying ourselves gets lost somewhere along the way. Yeah. And we get to the point where we're so used to just default destroying ourselves, we kind of forget why we were doing this to begin with, or we lose the ability to just say no, yeah. to just kind of step back and say, you know what, fuck this. Why am I not getting paid, yeah. right? Like we raised a series A round. I'm getting paid less than everybody else at the company. Why? Right. Like, why did I agree to this? Right. Right. And you start to look back and you say, there's no way I can look at my marriage over the past two years and say it's gotten better because of my startup. Correct. If I was starting my startup from, the, from, from ground zero and I knew what I knew now, I would have never signed up for it. Yeah. Right. And so if that's the case, you got to look back at some point and say, given where things are, this is not working for me anymore. Right. I have to make a substantive hard change. And I think part of that change comes from recognizing that these things have just kind of bubbled up over time. And now you got to basically pay back that debt that you've created with yourself. For sure. For sure. And, and there's a lot of things that, that drive us into these behaviors Right again, uh, depending on what the situation of the startup is, if you've taken on funding, uh, you may feel beholden that you have to keep doing these things. We've talked about this before. The investors may not feel the same way at all. Right? We we talked about these <laughs> these one sided conversations several times. Right. Where we feel like we have to do something because there's some expectation. We feel this level of guilt. Um, you know, the, the people who joined us early in the team, you know, we haven't, we haven't raised their salaries enough. We haven't gotten them to a, right. a, to, to a liquid moment. We haven't done these things. Um, we can easily forget about all the things that we have done for them. Um, but, you know, there are these things that we thought would happen, these things that we wanted to happen. And so we feel guilty about that. And I think that's part of what traps us into these habitual behaviors, even well past the point of, of their utility. Um, which then leads us into something else. Not only do we develop these habits and set these maybe very deeply internal expectations, again, subconscious expectations that we're going to keep doing this stuff, then we look around and we realize, so does everybody else. It's, it's on us. They all have this expectation that we're going to keep doing this because that's the expectation that we created for them of what we are willing to sacrifice to do this, right? 
and we were proud of it. Oh man! Right, right. in that many badge cases, of honor. you know, we were proud of yeah. it. Right, the, the the badge of honor. Um, hey, everybody, I'm going to abuse myself to the nth end. I want you to get used to that. And, and, and the worst part about me killing myself is I'm going to tell you how how what a badass I am for yeah. doing it. Right, it's just this is kind of backwards startup lore. And I think that uh, of all the places where we make those little sacrifices, for example, we take on funding. Yep. And we say, you know what, you know, the noble thing for me to do is I'm going to take the smallest salary possible so that the entire company has more capital to work right. with. And there's some truth in kind of understanding around that. However, here's what actually happened. We just told everybody, it's okay to not pay me, yep. right? <laughs> yeah, my contribution, I have equity, so my the, the time that I spend right. isn't, you know, worth paying for. Everyone else is, but just yep. not me. There's no version, we've talked about this in previous episodes, where the investors pull us aside and say, Ryan, Wilf, you guys have been killing yourselves for too long. You're in so much debt right now. You've barely even seen your families. At the very least, let us top you up on salary. Right, right. <laughs> that conversation has I never happened. I have so many in unread emails that, are, that have that same subject line. Yeah, in my yeah, box. yeah, yeah. I just ignore them because, you know, I want to keep sacrificing. Well, and think about this. If, if say, with our staff, right, if, if they keep dropping the ball on things and we keep making up for it, yep. in their minds, Kind of like kids feel like, you know, they have their, their yep. parents to make up for it. If we drop the ball, that's fine. Ryan will be there yeah. to make up for it, right? Yep. Um, We're the backstop. Uh, it's not that I don't have to try that hard, but if I fail, someone else will will solve the problem for me, yes. right? And we get so used to being in that that mindset, that behavior, that we forget that was the polar opposite of what we were trying to achieve. <laughs> right. <laughs> the whole we literally point. hired this person, so I would never have to do that again. 100%. And yet, right. now I have to do it. And I have to do it irregularly, just when right. they drop the ball, right? So it means right. it's these surprises that come out of nowhere, and I've now built my new routines around the expectation that I don't have to do those things, and so it becomes even more disruptive. I mean, I've, I've definitely had situations in the past where I've put work off onto somebody else's plate, and it became more work for me somehow as 100%. a result yep. because of the disruption. Because, of course, I didn't just empty my plate and leave it empty, right? I emptied the plate of that, and then I loaded it up with something else. And yep. then that kept creeping back in and disrupting the other thing I was supposed to be getting done. And it can be really disastrous, right? And when you multiply that by 10, 15, 150, 200 employees, you see where it goes, right? It gets, it gets shitty exponentially quick. And I think probably the person that, that we convince the most that this is okay is ourselves, <laughs> right? right? Again, we have to, we're otherwise we wouldn't be unhappy. doing it. Yeah. Right. And yet, and we're like, well, I guess this is the way it goes, right? Yeah. Or we have a horrible relationship, you know, with, with in, in our personal lives, right? Yeah. Because of the startup, you know? Right, right. Um, and I'm like, ah, I guess that's the way it goes, right? And over time, we've gotten so used to this being the case like I said, like the missed soccer games or uh, yeah. the arguments because of, you know, where the startup's at back at home, things like that, that we start to lose our minds and we forget, again, that if we were starting this from scratch, you and I, Ryan, were co-founding a new company together yep. and we said all of these things are about to happen, neither of us would sign up for it. No, we'd be <laughs> like, like, we either find a way to block it's that now ever. Or, it's, or it's a no-go. And, you know, like, let's take a moment to appreciate the irony that just based on the typical personality of the entrepreneur and the reason that we started these things, again, like that freedom being way up there, right? If not number one for everybody, right. it's in the top three. You can't tell me it's not. The irony that we would not accept these conditions that we've placed upon ourselves from anyone else on the planet, right? The, the depth of that irony cannot be overlooked. Right? The, the hypocrisy involved in the way we treat ourselves when we absolutely would not accept that treatment from anyone else. In fact, that's often the reason we're doing this in the first place. Right? So we've got to get over that. But consider the other fact. It's also within our power to reverse this. Absolutely. Right? This isn't a forever sentence. Right? Like we, we do have the capability to reverse all this, this, this crazy thing that we got ourselves into. However, in the same way that we got there, yeah. bit by bit, you know, death by a thousand paper cuts, we also essentially, I think, have to chip our way back out of it. 
Sure. Right? We can't just say, oh, no, I'm taking as many vacations as I want. I'm getting paid exactly what I want. That sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't quite work that way. Right. But I think if we zoom out a touch and we were to say, okay, look, it's fucked up by how I got here, but, I, but I'm here. Here are the steps that I'm going to start taking toward getting myself out of this and getting back to what my original goals are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's it's really, I mean, I've, where it starts, I guess it starts with the realization, right? There, there has to be some thing that makes you go, hmm, I need to fix this, right? And so there's kind of that, that big moment, maybe not that big. Um, in most cases, it does. It, it, it tends to be something large that happens um, that, that makes you lean back and say, I need to evaluate this. And then it goes back to just reevaluating those initial goals that you set out to achieve, right? It's, it's not right. more complicated than that. Now, compare them. Those exactly compare them to where you are now. Figure out what the deltas are, and then decide what steps will get you closer to those goals, if in fact they are still the same. Now, I, I think that goals can change over time. Life circumstances change over time. You and I both know people who have started companies and then middle of the company started families, and that can absolutely change those north star goals, and that's okay too. But that requires a realignment. But let's just assume that your goals were what they were, and they, they stayed that way, and you're just off course. The course recorrections just take going back to a clear understanding of what those things were, and then how do I get there, but how do I get there this time with some control over my experience in all of this, right? Because at the end of the day, we didn't build these things so that we could work for them. We built them so that they could work for us. And of course, it's a give and take, right. and, and there, there are periods where we're doing more of the work. But at the end of the day, at the end of the startup, at the end of the line, if there isn't some sort of payback or there isn't some sort of beneficial outcome for you, and that's through your own design and action, something's gone terribly awry. But like you said, it's totally fixable, just takes attention. All right, so that was fun. But let's actually keep this conversation going. You've heard what we think about this, but, you know, Ryan and I would really like to hear what you think. And we're online, like, all day long, pretty much talking about every startup topic you could think of, from fundraising to customer acquisition to just really how to get all of this crazy startup stuff out of your head. And there's tons of other founders just like you. They're weighing in on these topics, so you'll get a chance to just hang out and meet some really smart founders. We're also super, super easy to find. You head over to groups.startups.com and let Ryan and I hear what's on your mind. Let's get to know each other a little bit and let's just start having more of these conversations.